I like how, yeah, I like that documentary. Last night? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. It took me a little bit to get over how produced it was. That mm-hmm. makes sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's like, what's happening right now? Um, I did like it. It was, and this is exactly what they said, but it was cool to see, because I didn't know anything really about this stuff before watching it. Um, it it's cool to see how simple it is, too. Mm-hmm. Which is the whole point, and that you know that's yeah. the point. They're like, this isn't a big deal, blah blah. But like, it, they, I thought they did it well. Do you remember why they went on that? Tan- uh, maybe we shouldn't spoil. Yeah, I remember when they went on the tangent about like um, organisms and bacteria and everything, and then they went into about the gut. Was that kind of just a side tangent to get well, into well, soil? How th- there's stuff living in soil. I believe that's why they okay. did that. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, they wanted to explain. They had a weird flow where they wanted to also talk about other things. It was kind of a weird flow, yeah. There was a lot of time spent building it up as opposed to just talking about Oh, the yes. Well, they have to. They have yeah. to. But, like, it was very repetitive at one point. I was like, all right, we're going to actually get to, like, you know, like, what is the solution? You got me hooked. All right, yeah. let's do it. Well, how do we use the soil, you know? I'm glad they finally did that, too. And they did it well once we finally got there. Like Someone the... with enough money finally cared. Yeah. Er- and enough connections. Because <laughs> I'd seen very similar documentaries, like, in class, about other things. Yeah, there was But it shit. wasn't... Didn't have the connections. It wasn't as well produced. The lay person is not going to watch those. Yeah. This, a lot of people will watch. Yeah. Tom Brady, baby. Especially if you just get, or it's really his wife. When he was talking to it, I'm like, he does not want to be here right now. He he has to do this. Yeah, that was really weird. Because like, all he really said was about food. He like, just yeah, had I gotta to, keep my He bed. just had to smile. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was his point. He just had to show that he supported the documentary. <laughs> and every time, Tom Brady? Tom, Tom, Tom Brady? Football, you, football throw. Could you imagine how that emerges, like in their relationship, him and his wife? Like she starts bringing up, she's like, "Yeah, I think I'm gonna do this documentary." Mm-hmm. We're like, yeah, go for it, babe. Come <laughs> on, you can do it. And then goes, she goes, and she goes, "Yeah, I just hired all my actor friends." You go, you did what? <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. H- how much money? <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh my gosh, shit. Yeah, who else was famous in that? Apparently, there were quite a bit of people. It was a narrator. I don't really know their names. I looked it up earlier. Hmm. but And then there was, like, the comedian at the end in the credits. Yeah, she's... I was, I was she like, was what very the fuck? Funny. Like, she wasn't in it. Yeah. But she did some questioning. She's definitely just a friend. Yeah. But... Connections. Yeah, there Back were at least, the like, world. ten big-name people in it. Yeah. I nice. really love the part where they showed the transformation in China. That was awesome. Just like, yeah, this place is a desert. Poof. Yeah. I never thought about that before is why desertification started. Because you can look at it everywhere in Egypt. This is what started Africa. Mm-hmm. And that could have been what killed them off. There's all the deserts in the Middle East. Because that's where civilization started. Yeah. I had always thought that's just how it always was. Yeah. But that's how you learned that it... No. But that... This is what makes me think there's no way that deserts is strictly human. Because even... I remember... And maybe we should look it up. But I remember when learning about these things, a big reason that these trade routes, how they function is... Like, it's not like they were before the desert. The des- desert was already there. It could have been before recorded history, if that makes sense. Right. There could have been a wave before. Especially it, but... because the Garden of Eden is supposed to be, like, around the Ganges and Euphrates, like, in the Middle East. Like, well, that yeah. is no, where... No, no, no. The Middle East I yeah. agree with, but I'm saying more the Sahara Desert more... in Africa. Because that's a large strip. Yeah, yeah, Like, I but wouldn't more say... than 15,000 years ago, like, before this timeline... There were still humans, or humans, and people, mm-hmm. and it could go back that far. I just would be surprised that they would be able to 
Maybe, maybe not. But for them to be able to make such an impact before that, that far, because I could believe that humans are that long ago, but for them to make a impact on the Earth and have the technological means to, you know, blow up their land until it becomes a desert. Well, it doesn't require much. I guess well, not. I, really, if you look at mainstream history, the, that story wouldn't make sense. But I don't think that that's right. I think they were, they had more than we say they did mm-hmm. before, longer than 15,000 years ago, before the Ice Age. What really blew my mind was the Dust Bowl. And how fast it happened. Because it was the Great Plains. And now it's just desert. Like. There were probably in the very, like the Rockies. That was probably desert before us. Could have been, maybe. Especially they're so sharp. Mm -hmm. That one blew my mind. I was thinking about, because China, throughout all of the past 10,000 years or so, like, they were always, like, one of the number one powers in the world. And, like, if you think, if you remember the Mongolian Empire, they were kind of centered on China's west coast, because my, my, uh, Mongolia currently is, like, northwest of China, and that whole center is desert now. And that's where they started. And now it's barren. Mm-hmm. I also think it used to happen over much longer periods of time. It happens very quickly. Mm-hmm. Like, think about the... We went to the corn maze. Can I draw on this? Yeah. Okay, keep going. We went to the corn maze. And that was just, like, sand. It was basically sand and rock. Mm-hmm. And... They may not have been there for very long. Like, it didn't have to take that long to get that bad. It's like, think about how long you kill upstate New York. Just, like, chopping down the trees. Not much goes corn. on in Adirondacks, though, I have to say. They're pretty good about that. Farming-wise? Yeah. Like, the Adirondacks. Oh. Farming-wise, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like that around oh I guess that's a dumb point because obviously all of them are held pretty well. But. That was that was another thing I was thinking about last night. Where like the peaks, you have all those like uh, rock slides, right? Mm-hmm. Where there was stuff there, and then it all eroded away. Yeah, a lot of that is because of us climbing them. Really? When I went hiking at the bottom of Mount Dix. Yeah, but there must dicks. be other things hiking you. There, down. there are other things. No, this point it's really just us. Well, Maybe I guess before, it. before, right? Yeah, before we killed off. All but the shit what I'm it. saying is us clearing it. It's not really the act of hiding. It's we clear it in order to hike it. Right. Like when you're at the. But top, that doesn't have to do with the rock slides, does it? It holds water. It causes right. erosion. Right, right. And right. then eventually everything just leaves. That makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, okay. Because when you're at the bottom... It makes like the barrel of a gun. It yeah. It just comes down harder and yeah. faster. And it keeps hitting them in the same spot as opposed to an equal, you know, space over time. Yeah. Because the, the trails constantly change because you get washouts and stuff. Yeah. But when it's not at the top of the mountain, it's not as big of a deal. Because it'll regenerate faster. Even though it, it could still take 50 to 100 years. Mm-hmm. But... Like, up those mountains, when you have those slides, nothing's growing back there for probably millions of years. Like, those buffalo aren't ever coming back. The Great Plains are not coming. They could come back in a different way now. Well, I think that's... Like, yeah. if you reverse desertification, like, you could do things. I think that's what their point is. We're not... And and the, and they're arguing that it's, you could say it's better now, because his point, the, you know, I think of that uh, farmer who's making a hundred bucks an acre, you know, like the land wasn't like that before, but now it's healthier, it's mm-hmm. more diverse, it's speeding up the natural flow yeah. of you know yeah. evolution with, in this biome. Yeah. I really like that they went full for it as like, the climate change solution, like the real climate change solution. 
because they didn't give any numbers, which I found was weird, and I don't know any numbers. Like, how does the amount of carbon that we're losing with tilling, how does that compare with what we're doing with fossil fuels? Um, yeah, they never really talked about that. They didn't do any numbers. They didn't do any numbers. The, the only thing they did was that chart where throughout the year they would show yeah. red was CO2, blue was, was nothing. Which I thought was odd, too, because it was signi- it was crazy how significant the change was, even though t- like they were only talking about that one thing, tilling. But like the s- factories are still pumping out the same shit. The cars are still moving the same shit. Everything is constant. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it's, I was surprised to see such a significant change for just one factor changing. Oh. You know. Well, it's more like you're releasing with the tilling, everything goes up, and then the crops are growing on top of you're not tilling anymore. No, I get that. And well, also, I guess if, you they, look, if you look at the scale... I was just about to say, they definitely the, fucked with the yes, scale. Yes, yes, yes. Because you can make blue, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's what they did. Because in my head, you know, like, when you intuitively think it, you're like, oh, if it's blue, then it's zero. But obviously mm-hmm. not. It must have been probably... You know, four twenty to four ten, and blue is four ten. You know, it's so still going to be very significant if it's true with the bill that France passed with almost most of the countries in the world, where um, whatever it was point four percent of something, but it would compensate for all the fossil fuels we put in the air mm-hmm. by sequestering carbon in the soil by just changing our farming habits. I also just like the way that they, like, like, it didn't even have to be, like, this sacrifice. It was just like, yeah, no. like, you should do this. Yeah, it's great for CO2. And also, like, do you want to grow your own plants? Yeah. Do you want to have a divor- more diverse ecosystem? Like, that, yeah. I feel like they had a lot of tangents. Like, I remember that one hippie dude who I laughed at because he just looked ridiculous, but he was another celebrity. Mm-hmm. And he didn't have anything to say other than, like, nature is cool. And I'm like, yeah, it is cool. Like, it doesn't have to be this big thing. He's like, this is how it should be. We should have tall grass and different plants growing on themselves. I'm like, yeah, that would be good. Like, you remember the old guy sitting in like yeah, the he was grass? like, <laughs> he yeah. was a beast. He was like, who the fuck is this guy next to me? <laughs> I like when they showed the no till machinery. I thought that was interesting. That was cool. I like how they introduced it. Yeah. It was all like aggressive, aggressive. Then yeah. just like. I like how they had the farmer in there explaining, like, things. He was a very proud man. Yeah. He was cool. He was like, yeah, I'm the best fucking farmer out there. More people should be like me. There are definitely a lot of things they missed, though. Like, I'm curious, waiting, well, like, why doesn't everyone already do it? Like, what are the counter-arguments? Like, what's stopping change That's what's what the post says. well people are scared yes change. the information isn't fully out there yet yes they were essentially addressing it as if it was just an old school technique that needs to be outdated soon you know it was outdated but whatever it yes. just takes time yeah because that's what was the main point was because like i talked to a lot of people and sometimes i get people with cross arms no no faces and mm-hmm. his response to that is like well I promise you, if you let me, I can use my techniques and improve your farm. Are you going to listen to me? Yeah. Probably not. This is the whole problem with people as a whole. It's, people, life is about the principle. We are not... This is why all economics is inherently skewed, because we look at people and decisions as cost-benefit analysis. Yeah. And that's not what people go... People, people are driven by their emotions and their principles and their identities and how they do things and... Change is just super, super difficult. So that's at least my explanation. I think this is what they said to why people aren't doing it already. You know? Yeah. Because I can totally see that. Like, I can, I can envision that. You know, imagine you get this pitch, right? You're, you're talking to all these different farmers. Or, you know, you have, like, that thing where you're set up and you're presenting your thing and then you got the farmers there. You just probably, from their point of view, seem like this hippy dippy like you know whatever grassy and liberal far alternative farmer who's trying to tell me the right way to grow my corn like i've yeah. been growing my corn the way my granddad grew my corn yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i guess more what i'm getting at is they're all going to have all this machinery to do not what they need to do if that makes sense like for there to switch 
they would have to replace it with the no tail well, Yeah, and also, uh, not only do they have to be convinced, but they have to be convinced to, because there's it, probably they a lot of fixed costs. so much that it's better. Yeah. Like, they have to know that they're going to be They're like, money. this is how much money it's going to cost to make all these switches, and, like, you know, like, that, that is going to be how much they think it benefits at minimum. That's what I was trying to look for before, is, like, the farmer that said about making a hundred bucks per acre, um, but it's very hard to find these things, especially when it's in a documentary like that. Mm -hmm. Like, how did you come up with this number? I mean, obviously the guy must do must be doing better, right? He yeah. said four years in a row the guy harvested 10, 20% of one harvest, you know? So yeah, there's a lot of fixed costs and maybe he's not making money yet, but like... Yeah. What He's I was, on a more profitable road. What confused me was he got wiped out by hail like two years in a row. Yeah. And then there was no mention of hail anymore after he switched to permaculture. Sure. There's definitely still hail. He definitely still lost crops. <laughs> it's, I started losing 30%. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I'm sure there's a lot of... Because it's, it's also hard because with that climate thing where if it's desertified... And the climate has changed, and there's droughts, and you're getting bad weather. Everything is going to have to change at once, and it's going to cost a lot of money to fix it before then you can make money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that was, uh, that was fun. It was a good documentary. I also... My, my criticism with it is they did address composting, but they didn't really fully address too, too much what you can do as an individual. Oh, yeah. It was very focused on farmer. Well, they, Which is probably fine. It's fine. They, like, they showed the California one, and I'm doing like a, a school project where we're doing food waste, but it's going to be in Broome County, and we kept talking about how, yeah, they do it in California and Europe, Mm -hmm. Um, but I never saw like mm -hmm. what it looked like, never yeah. saw what it was. And like, I was just amazed at how, how much infrastructure went into it. Mm -hmm. Like it was this very, and then they put it through the digesters and so quickly it was soil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was cool. All about the principle. Compost. First thing you can ask, well, why don't we do that here? Got to get people to believe in what you think. Yeah. That too. Got to get people to give a shit. It's also taxes. I'm thinking about it as like, oh, this is another reason why California tax is so high. Hmm. So you definitely have to pay for that shit. Mm -hmm. One way or another. It's such a funny predicament we find ourselves in. Taxes, fixing climate change, <laughs> paper, or the rock we live on. <laughs> yeah, paper beats rock. Paper beats rock. <laughs> Don't forget paper it. Paper beats rock. Mm. Paper blades. I also did the the whole grazing thing with the. You rotate the animals on different plots of grassland. I'd seen that. That's That's been around for a while. Yeah, I didn't think that was very revolutionary. No, but, but it's not common, even though grass-fed beef has been growing for a while. I thought it was nice how open it all was. That was cute. What do you mean? I feel like normally I picture more closed-in things, but it was cute how the fence was like... It just looked like it was all one big field. Oh, yeah, it's very arbitrary. Like, they just remove the rope. Yeah. Get in there. It works. Yeah. Um, so did that directly have to do with what they're saying with the soil thing? Like, they're just saying by rotating yes. the animals will just help out the soil. It's similar to what happened in the Great Plains with the buffalo, where the buffalo would destroy the land, shit, move, right, right. eat, destroy it, shit, move, yeah. and, like, and she was going in about these, these clumps, clumps of poop, and that's where everything grew out of. Yeah, what I found interesting about two of that is, like, it just comes down to, like, do we trust other things or other people? 
because you know you can break this all up and say the sheep need to graze here now they need to do this now they need to do this here or you can just recognize the sheep are going to know where to move because the grass is going to be tallest over there Mm -hmm. they are going to know when to eat because they're going to want to eat the stuff that coincidentally is also when we want them to eat it, you know, like, yes. And so it's like, I feel like a lot of this farming when you're looking at a bunch of these other tactics when they're just fucking like crowding these dens and then you throw the grain at their faces and mm -hmm. you're like, it's just like, I mean, it's exactly what they're talking about, but there's no flow with it. There's no like, trust which is a weird thing to say for like a farm animal but you know it's just like here's your food we shall milk you here kill you here yeah eat yeah. you here well those factory farms it's like these little things that have to grow there's no love that goes into it no love it's like yeah it the they got some good photos of like big factory farms too like mm -hmm. those massive yeah, the, it's just brown crazy. the ground yep. and there's animals everywhere yep. let's uh let's start a school system and make that a required field trip imagine that yeah they won't let you on though <laughs> they don't let you go there why not because well, they don't want people to see it what this is the whole thing with, uh, on, meat like, the meatpacking. Similar thing. Alright, then, overnight, or what we'll do is we'll break into the, and get some good old photos. I mean, I guess there's plenty of photos. We'll they're repost also, a bunch of already They're also not photos. around here. They're, like, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I'd be shocked if that was in New York. Yeah. Like, the, what they showed. Also doesn't make sense because they're destroying that land to just house the animals. And then they're destroying other land to do the grains well, and the soy. The, well, that was their whole point because 70% of crops produced in the U.S. is like corn, mm -hmm. soy. Wild, soy, hay, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then 99% of those farm or, you know, livestock consumable food is given to the livestock. Yeah. And so it's also extremely counterintuitive, you know, because you're growing these things to give to the things that you're trying to grow. And, like, it's just this expensive, shitty process. It must have made sense for some reason, though. Like, you must, there must have been, like, you could use less land to do it, or it's less work or well, something. Well, that's their point in the sense that it was good in the beginning, because, like, pesticides work really well in the beginning. But then mm. after 10 years, your shit's dead. And you're like, oh, I didn't so see there that were yeah, that's right. Okay. So they're probably having a grand old time with their animals. Yeah. Let's bring in more animals. The pesticides were a temporary boost. And then they're like, yeah. oh, the animals are eating too much. That's fine. We'll just give them a little bit of our corn. Throw the corn in there. Even all mm -hmm. that shit out. Yeah, it went on this spiral in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. I assume also you kind of, it's not this flowing thing in the sense that it's. I'd assume it's. More to by demand, so it's this farm of okay. Well, I signed this contract. I gotta get this much meat ready for them by this time. I don't give a fuck what I have to do. I am getting that 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 shipment yeah. will be filled. You know. Yeah. And so then, you have less freedom because you have to do this thing. I'm not surprised at how how useless traditional farmland is like mm -hmm. you don't make much money from a traditional yeah that's pretty crazy acre of land but then you look at like if you grow have like a market garden right oh my god if you if you have a market garden you grow like herbs and like berries mm -hmm. small expensive stuff you can make a shit ton of money on half an acre Yeah. I um honestly I was a little convinced. I was just like, alright, well, let's uh let's start this fucking farm with these new techniques. Mm-hmm. Can make some cash. <laughs> I just have to find what the fuck they were talking about in the in the documentary. Seems like you just buy that uh no till no till thingy. I'll drive yeah, that around. You gotta you gotta yeah, that's put it. some numbers together first. Oh, there's tons of stuff you have to do. But I'm sure there will be more and more resources available for it. And that, yeah, that seemed like a good thing. 
I really like the idea that you can just buy shitty land. You just need to sit on it. Oh, yeah, that was another good, good, good. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. I feel like that would be a cool... The that's, issue, a, that's a cool life. We should do that. The issue is you kind of have for, to go to the middle of nowhere for it. we got to separate it out for like five years-ish, do our shit, and then come and start a farm. Mm-hmm. That'd be fun. Five, 5,000 acres. Sure. <laughs> in... In... in by then, Iowa. And then Austin will already have his own farm, so mm-hmm. we'll just help grow it. We'll tag along. This farmland is expensive when you're near cities. You know there's some good ones. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I think that'd be cool. I would love that. Here's outside, hands on. It's a lot of problem solving, but like, not too, too difficult, I feel like. What I we're not going deep in the world of shit yeah. that I want to avoid in life. Yeah. yeah, they had what they showed was a more straightforward where you just grow grass at the bottom mm-hmm. and then plant like corn on top. Mm-hmm. But they're much different permaculture setups. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's this eat whatever. There are tons. No, of no, no. no. Get into. What I'm saying is oh. they they spoke about like the idea of making earth the garden of eden again Mm -hmm. and that's what they didn't show that in the documentary what that Mm -hmm. looks like but there are other permaculture examples where you go to and it's like the garden of eden Mm -hmm. like there's little fruits and apple trees and stuff all over the place there's different trees everywhere and there's bushes Mm -hmm. that uh that sent me down a rabbit hole of just thinking 